Hey friends, welcome back. This is Sean Yass, speaker, coach and trainer, author of the book, Have a Life Attack. Today I'm going to share with you three real game-changing tips that I've recommended for my coaching clients when it comes to public speaking, presenting your material, whether it be one-on-one -on -one over a Zoom call, in a boardroom scenario, or maybe it's from stage in front of a hundred or a thousand people. These are three tips that have been really valuable for me over the last decade and a half as a motivational, inspirational speaker. So before we get into tip number one today on the three tips to helping you with your presentations and your public speaking, make sure that you stick around to the end because I've got some exciting news to share with you. So tip number one is less is more. Man, I wish someone had shared this with me before I started public speaking. Someone actually did share this with me right up front um, after one of my first public, public addresses when I did a motivational talk for a group of business people in Cape Town. Uh, I was so excited, I was so pumped and I, and I, and I shared from my heart and you know, I, I sat down for a cup of coffee afterwards with, with a guy that I, the first time I'd met him, he was actually a motivational speaker, been in the crowd and he, he was actually very gracious, you know, he said to me, Sean, you spoke really well, but <laughs> they always say everything before the butt is bull, but in this case he was really nice, after I took the knife out, you know, because <laughs> he said, Sean, but you were all over the place. And you know, as I say, after I reflected, I realized he was absolutely right. You know, when you're starting out in speaking and presenting, you feel that more is better. You know, I'll, I'll convince them more, I'll, I'll inspire them more, you know. <laughs> Whatever it is, when you get nervous, you just tell them more, more, more details, more points. Make a point, tell that story. Make a point, tell that story and draw that story back to the point. Folks, less is more. Believe me when it comes to presenting and the, 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 the details, the details is what people get lost in during your presentation. You start to see that thousand yard stare, <laughs> you know, they kind of gloss over and they start looking at their watches, uh, yawning or looking outside, you know, you've lost them. Less is more. And I think there are two groups of people that really struggle with. Obviously those that are never shy of a word or two, if you saw my personality style uh, video that I talked about the different personality styles in the, my previous video, you'll know that the our personalities love to tell a story. They love to speak. They love the sound of their own voice and they never shy of that word or two. So make sure Mr. and Mrs. I out there, don't take an offense, take a gate. Make sure that you keep it to less is more. More is not, <laughs> is not better. Just because you tell a lot more stories doesn't mean it's going to be a better presentation. The second group is Though they tend to get a little bit nervous and uh, do I see any hands out there? They say that the fear of uh, public speaking is one of the greatest fears out there. Most people would rather be in the casket than give the eulogy. <laughs> and so um, if that's you, maybe you found yourself getting up on stage and then you know you look and you see the sea of eyeballs and faces looking back at you and uh, you either want to flee or you want to wee, <laughs> the two things I say. <laughs> and um, if, as you go along and you start to present, you just start rambling on and on and on, just pure nerves. You know, if you don't shut down, you ramble, you ramble, you ramble. So less is more, less is more. Make a point, tell that story. That was tip number one. Tip number two is be interested, not interesting. <laughs> yes, it's huge. Be interested, not interesting. You know, I think every Tom, Dick and Barry that's ever become a public speaker, motivational speaker, inspirational speaker, or presented, forgot. It's not about them. It's about them. It's, a, <laughs> you know, it's about the audience. It's about the people you're adding value to, the people you're speaking to, the people you're inspiring to, the people you're educating. If you're, if you're doing a presentation, a PowerPoint, Maybe you're talking at a, at, a, at a board meeting. Maybe you're presenting to a school. Maybe you're just in front of your, 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 your management. You're, you're an account manager and it's your team that are around the table. Maybe it's 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 people and you're on stage. It's about them. Be interested, not interesting. You know, I think somebody that really gets this is um, Les Brown, who I, I was very blessed to mentor with back in 2009, 2010. Met him in West Palm Beach, and I, I was writing my book at the time, Have a Life Attack, as we say in South Africa. And um, in America, Have a Life Attack doesn't sound like that in American. Uh, and uh, when I said to Les, I'm writing this book, is to have a life attack. He said, oh, that's fantastic. Let's shoot a video. And he grabbed me around and he hung me. And we, uh, we stood there and we, he started speaking about have a laugh attack, thinking I was talking about having a laugh attack. 
And of course, I was laughing so much, I had my head on his shoulder and I just didn't have the heart at the time to stop the video. <laughs> it was so good. But my point is, Sean, you digress, is that he told an amazing story about how laughter, laughter is so good, so good, and how he loves to make people laugh and how therapeutic it is. And then he brought it back to the audience through that lens. And he said, you know, a merry heart does good like medicine. And, and you need to laugh more. You need to laugh more. And um, Les was so good at that. And we need to be good at that. We need to make sure that we think about the audience. It's about them. And here's a side tip, folks. This is golden. If you suffer from the fear of public speaking and anxiety, I share this with all my coaching clients when we talk about uh, public speaking and, and we go through the course on public speaking. One thing that will change the game for you is when you take your attention off yourself. You've prepared. You're ready. And you make sure you're interested, not interesting. That's tip number two. Okay, so we've dealt with tip number one, less is more. Tip number two, be interested, not interesting. Tip number three is all about be you here. <laughs> Strange word. You here, Sean. What the what the flip do you mean by being you here? It means about being authentically you. You know when you start off, especially as a as a motivational speaker or Someone's presenting to crowds. You generally have a mentor. You have someone that's coached you. You've gone through some training or whatever. And you've seen someone that you really, wow, you look up to. You look up to the Les Browns of this world, the John Maxwells of this world. And what do you do? One, you get intimidated because they're flipping good. They're amazing speakers. Little do you know the adversity, the mistakes, the trials, the tribulations, and all the failures that they've had to go through in order to get as good as they are. I like what John Maxwell says. I think he said it took him nine or ten years you know, to become an overnight success as a speaker. And at the time he was a pastor, I can imagine how many times he spoke during the week and over those nine to ten years, thousands of times, thousands of times. But he just persevered. There's a long, it takes a long time to perfect the art and the science of public speaking. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some time. And don't be intimidated. Don't look at those gurus out there. Not that they would call themselves gurus, but that we kind of put them on this pedestal. And, um, and then forget who you are. Be you here. Don't be intimidated by them. Secondly is we want to imitate them. So we intimidate it or we want to imitate them. So we, we do what they do or we say what they say. And, you know, Les Brown always says, you've got to be hungry. You know, you know I, was, I started out, I was going, you've got to be hungry. You know, <laughs> who is that? That's not Sean. That's Les Brown, man. That's Les Brown. And, and it works for Les. And, and it's great for Les. And, um, you know, speaking of Les, and on this point, to this point, he tells an amazing story of how when he wanted to start off as a, as a motivational speaker, he was in a crowd, he was listening to a rather boring motivational speaker. But near the end of the talk, the guy said something that was life-changing for him. Now, bear in mind, I'm listening to Les tell the story. I'm sitting in my, my study um, back in 2008, 2009, listening to this audio and contemplating myself. Sean, is this an area that you want to go into. I have this inner desire, but I'm not quite sure. I'm a little afraid, certainly uncertain, not confident at all about doing this. And he says these words that the speaker said to him on that day. He said, the reason I'm up here and you down there is because I represent the thoughts that you have rejected for yourself. Wow. I represent the thoughts that you have rejected for yourself. What is crying in your heart? What is calling in your heart? Maybe you really want to be a more public speaker. You want to inspire people. You want to motivate people. Maybe that's not you at all. Maybe you just want to be able to remember your name when you present <laughs> at the next board meeting or uh, you know, at the next synod or the next conference where they now said to you, not just talking to 20 people you know, that are employed in your company. You're now talking to 20,000 people from stage. Maybe that's you. Either way. There is something calling to you to improve yourself. Make sure that you stay true to who you are. Be you here is point number three. Try to be authentically you. You don't even have to try to be totally honest. Just let it come out from your beingness. I always say it's, it's from your inner beingness. Don't try to be somebody else. Be you. You know, if you're a person that can tell a joke, that's fine. But don't tell a joke if you're not a person that can tell a joke. Some people get away with it. Some people don't. Be authentically you. Now, I told you about the exciting news, but before I do that, let me recap. 
I said, less is more, tip number one. Be interested, not interesting, tip number two. And tip number three, be you here. So the exciting news is this, is that um, I'm going to be releasing a, a workshop sort of video on, on public speaking and presentation. If you want to know more about that, please click on the link below and I'll tell you a little bit about that. A blueprint on how to put together a presentation to take people through the presentation and keep them engaged, present correctly. And maybe you're in sales and you really want to get the results at the end of your presentation. I'll be sharing some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years with you, uh, leading into other workshops as well if you want to take it to the next level in terms of your public speaking, inspirational speaking. So this has been Sean. Click on that link below. And if you've loved this video, like, comment, subscribe, share it around. I'd really appreciate it. But until later, God bless. Cheers.